This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Atmospheric Science playlist. It is on lightning, how we form lightning in thunderstorm clouds or cumulonimbus clouds. This video is going to look at what processes and stages of development that are required and the ingredients that are required to create lightning. So to begin with, we need to look back at the formation and stages of development for a cumulonimbus cloud or a thunderstorm cloud. Now these clouds are awesome to look at because they are one of a few types that are vertical. These are vertical growth as opposed to horizontal. This requires a very unstable atmosphere with low pressure and lots of air movement and air being sucked into this area and lots of water vapor, lots of humidity and you can get a lot of vertical movement of air through updrafts. In addition to the updrafts, you have downdrafts, you have vertical movement of air within the cloud that's going to bring the water vapor up to higher elevations and altitudes, thus to grow the cloud vertically. So from a certain altitude up to a high altitude, in some cases, as high as the troopores. So these clouds can become very big, very energetic and unstable, and this is where we can create lightning. So you need a certain height of cloud. Now, the clouds need to go high enough so that it goes into into sections of the atmosphere that are a certain temperature. So temperature plays a huge role in the formation of lightning. So you have this massive cloud. You have the dew point here in the LCL, which is eight degrees, and the surface temperature is 20 degrees. So the air is going to, going to rise, and you're going to have adiabatic cooling, up to eight degrees where the dew point is. So clouds are going to form, lane heat's going to release. You have the formation of updrafts and downdrafts to create this large vertical cloud. So I have three distinct areas of this cloud. We have the warm part of the cloud, which is here between, or it's basically anything that is a higher temperature than zero. And this dashed line here is going to signify, it's going to show where the freezing point is for water. Then you have the cold section of this high vertical cloud. Cold section is anything below freezing. So here down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. And that's the same also in Fahrenheit. So these two measurements or scales of temperature meet at minus or negative 40. Then we have up here in the top part, we have the super cooled section of the cloud, which usually involves the anvil, which can be many kilometers up in the air. And this is where you have no water, no liquid water present in the cloud. It's going to be ice, crystals, and various forms and sizes of hail or snow, but you'll have very little actual water that is present at that temperature in that state of matter. So you have water in the warm section, you have a mixture of water, ice, and snow, and hail. So you get a whole mixture of different types of precip in this cold section of the cloud that is below freezing temperatures. Then you'll get just the ice and some hail perhaps up in the higher elevations, higher altitudes that is around minus 40 degrees Celsius or minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So you need this differentiation of temperature within the cloud to form what's called graupel. And this is a German word that means soft hail. Now, this graupel forms up in the very cold sections of the cloud being created by these updrafts and downdrafts where the hail is kept in the cloud for a long time through the different movement of the air in this cold condition to form this graupel. And the graupel is a bit larger and it's soft hail, so it's larger. And because it's larger, gravity will bring it down towards the surface through the cloud. Now, this is the preparation for what's called polarization, to make something polar or to have poles. Like a battery would have a positive on one side, negative on the other side. Our Earth is like a large magnet where we have the poles, the North Pole, and the South Pole. Now what happens is in this cloud, we create the same situation whereby we polarize the static or electric charge that's inside this cloud. Now what happens is we have our electrons, which look like this. The electrons that are inside the cloud as part of the atoms and the elements that's inside this cloud, mostly water vapor, 
and water, so we have our H2O. And we have electrons that are negatively charged as opposed to a proton, which is possibly charged. Now over here on the left-hand side, I've drawn basically a cloud that doesn't have any Graupel yet. And you'll see that the positive and negative charges are just randomly flying around inside this cloud. Now, once the Graupel forms in the higher altitudes of this cloud, gravity will bring the Graupel obviously down towards the surface. As it does that, it's going to collide, bump, hit against the existing molecules, air molecules inside the cloud. And it's gonna basically strip or steal or grab all of the electrons as it flows or moves down through the downdrafts down towards the bottom of the cloud or towards the surface. So what happens is it dumps all of the electrons at the lower altitudes of the cloud. And as that happens, it's going to leave a more positive electric charge at the top of the cloud, which would be in the supercooled or the cold section of this cloud. So what we've done is we have polarized this cloud, one side being positive, one side or one section of the cloud being negative, and we have polarized this cloud, and now we have a difference in charge, and as you see, opposites attract. Therefore, we have the potential for creating a connection or a closed circuit or a current between the negative and positive charges, therefore creating our lightning. But what happens is what we see mostly or we experience is the lightning that forms from the cloud to the ground. Now, this is a small percentage of all the lightning that takes place on Earth. Most of the lightning, so nearly two thirds to three quarters of the lightning experienced in our atmosphere happens inside the clouds called intra cloud lightning so inside this single cell you'd have the lightning connect between the negative and the positive ions you also can get cloud to cloud lightning as well which is a small percentage so the majority is inside the cloud called intra cloud lightning but we as humans we experience or have the most thrill from watching lightning happen between the cloud and the surface or the ground now what happens is you have as the cloud is moving with the wind as the cloud moves over a certain area of the surface you have maybe a house here or you have a tree or you have a big huge structure like a skyscraper like new york or chicago and you have the positive charges being drawn towards this cloud that is extensively negative towards the bottom of the cloud thus drawing more positives towards it and we have this again this polarization between the surface and the cloud so if we transfer the same image and same polarization onto this cloud right here, we have negative and we have our positive on the surface. Now, step one, how to form this lightning bolt is to have what's what's known as the ionized channel of negative ions that come down towards the surface from the cloud base and they create what's called a stepped leader. It's like a hand that's reaching out towards something to grab it. So this negative ions and electrons are basically extending from the cloud down towards the surface. At the similar time or straight after, we have what's called a steamer, which is the positive charge that is gonna rise up from the surface towards this negative step leader and go towards it in between the ground and the cloud. Now, once these guys meet, they connect the pathway so right here, they're going to connect, connect the circuit, positive to negative, and create this ionized channel or ionized pathway in which the circuit can be closed and you'll get that flash, that bolt of bright light that we know as lightning. Now this pathway could be between two to seven inches wide, but the flash can make it seem a lot larger and from a lot further distance away, actually at night time. And what happens is you get this lightning bolt, which is called the return strike. And because the positive steamer comes kind of second, it kind of, the return strike does initiate from the ground towards the cloud. We always see it as cloud to ground. Now this can be also be called 
a dart leader. A dart leader is where once the pathway has been created in the atmosphere, now the air itself is a very good insulator. So rather than just the whole atmosphere becoming electrified, only this pathway that connects positive negative is actually the electrified area. The dart leader is where you'd have a multiple strike coming down from the cloud after the return strike happens. So the dart leader is that secondary flash. Now this could happen in a millisecond, so you might see it as one flash, but really you have the return strike and then you have a secondary dart leader which comes through the connected pathway down from the, from the cloud to the ground. So you can have multiple, multiple dart leaders, but it's such a quick event that our eyes just perceive it as one flash. So we've got step one, step leader comes out, negative charge comes out from the cloud. Step two, the return positive ions and charges come up from the ground called a steamer. Step three, the pathway is connected, they meet in the atmosphere, which is insulated, and we create what's called the return strike, which is the lightning bolt. And then multiple dart leaders can use that pathway that's connected, the ionized channel, to have multiple flashes of lightning, which can happen in a very short time. So we need all of this to occur to have the chance of this connected channel caused by polarization of the cloud with the ground. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.